Hello and welcome. Today we're in the upcoming tier 10 Italian destroyer, the Paolo Emilio. She is still a work in progress and thus subject to change. She is the counterpart to the Venezia with her seppiness. I will show her in port at around the 1630-ish mark with the commander skills and upgrades I use. So what's special about this destroyer? Well, first of all, she's Italian, and she has SAP instead of HE, meaning that you do not set any fires. As a result, she isn't quite as great at fighting battleships, but on the other hand, SAP makes her very dangerous for destroyers. And she also has the same smokescreen as the Venezia does, in that uh, it lasts for 40 seconds, or the active time is 40 seconds, and each smoke puff lasts for 10 seconds, but you can use it while going full speed and it will cover you. This actually can be not as great as you think in every situation, because sometimes you might cover the enemy destroyer so you won't be able to shoot her. But the SAP is also very good against light cruisers and uh, even heavy cruisers, because she can penetrate it. Now, she also has a speed boost. It's a standard speed boost, but the ship itself is so fast that she actually rivals French destroyers without speed boost. Which means that if she had a French speed boost, she could literally be as fast as, say, the Mogador and Kleber. Now, the torpedoes on the ship, you have three torpedo launchers of four torpedoes each. You have one in the middle and one launcher in the middle and one launcher on each side, so you can launch an eight, eight torpedoes maximum in one direction. However, the torpedoes are terrible. Terrible. They go 51 knots. That's two knots faster than the ship itself. Two knots. They do have a nice 12 kilometer range. And they do have a very good 1 km concealment range. But they deal 13,000 damage. Mutski at tier 5 does more damage per torpedo than the Paolo Emilio at tier 10. Meaning that these torpedoes are not very dangerous. Uh, often you'll I'll see that the torpedoes hit for like about the same amount as my SAP could hit if most of the shells hit. Meaning that uh, it's... It really doesn't bring uh, that much damage. However, if you get lucky with the torpedoes and you hit many of them, well, that can be quite good and it can be quite useful. Now, the way the ship mostly plays, though, is that you just try to engage with destroyers because your SAP is incredibly effective against them. And at least I have played her against cruisers, for example. Things like Salem's and Des Moines are ships you can hit quite hard. But you can't always just engage them head-on, because obviously they're cruisers and uh, they're pretty good against destroyers as well. But due to your speed and the range you have, it's possible to slowly whittle away at them, and that can be quite effective. So, for example, this ship has 138 km range. This is not with a range upgrade or advanced firing training, meaning that this is the base range. However, I don't think you should pretty much ever upgrade this range either, because... The shell arcs are bad enough that you really don't want more than this. SAP means that, uh, as I said, you're not that effective against battleships. However, you can still deal damage to them, especially when they show you broadside, because SAP does work kind of like AP does. In fact, if you don't know how SAP works, it's ba think of it basically like Minotaur AP, except that can't citadel and it cannot overpenetrate. That's basically all you have to think of them. So you, you, you still need to care about how the ships angle and all of those things. And uh, as you can imagine, Destroyer AP isn't exactly the most useful against battleships. Luckily though, this Kremlin, this mighty god of salt, is going to eat a whole bunch of my torpedoes. And that's going to give me quite a bit of damage. Look at that. Look at those nice... 6,000... Wait, what? I got the... Wait, what? I got the Citadel hit on the Kremlin with SAP. Okay. Okay, then. Somehow, I got the Citadel hit with SAP. Which makes absolutely no sense because the Kremlin should have very good armor. And this SAP can have a maximum penetration of 37 millimeters. I'm pretty sure that that is not enough to penetrate the Citadel armor of a Kremlin. 
that must be a bug. At least I cannot imagine how that would be intended because that's just that just seems weird. It seems like one of those bugs exists with SAP as it does with um, sometimes with AP when something like a Minotaur citadels a battleship at like 16 kilometers. The shell somehow phases through the armor. But this is just yeah, this is kind of weird because that really shouldn't have been a citadel, especially with SAP. But I mean, whatever, I'll take it. I, I, uh, I guess it's the balancing factor for how cr incredibly powerful the Kremlin is, right? But normally don't expect SAP to citadel anything, because you simply don't have the penetration. Anyway, we dealt with the Kremlin on that side, now it's time to deal with the Salem here, and try to take the Bicat. Now the downside with the ship is, even though it's incredibly deadly to destroyers, she does have 7.1 km concealment when going full concealment. As a result, she can't exactly go and chase down destroyers, because you're just going to be spotted and then take massive amounts of damage and go down pretty easily. Oh, torpedoes! But I have speed boost, so I should be able to avoid them. It's gonna be close, but not close enough. For the enemy, that is. We got the cap, sure, or we got, we avoided the torpedoes, now I'm gonna reverse into the cap and then we are gonna take this cap zone. That was quite lucky that I had speed boost available, otherwise that could have gone quite badly. Well, I suppose I have enough HP to survive some torpedo hits at the moment, especially when it hits the stern or the bow of the ship. And I mean, the ship does have 28,200 HP. As far as I understand, she does not take AP penetration damage like the Haruguma, but I might be wrong on that one. At least it hasn't felt that way to me. It seems to be either over pens or less damage, on average, from battleship AP shells. Overall though, I would say that I am not the happiest with this ship. Uh, she feels different from other destroyers, and this gives me the hope that perhaps I'm simply not playing it well enough that it could do better, but overall I've had trouble having great games in her. I've had uh, okay games and many situations in quite a few games that have made me go, wow, this is actually quite amazing, but I haven't exactly had many great games. This was one of them, I've had a few others, and the main reason is that the damage output is just not quite there. I can't exactly set, away run set runaway fighters on battleships, I can't get massive torpedo hits on uh, battleships, etc. Uh, for example, there was one game where me and where I rushed a Kremlin that had 65k HP. I got close range, like I was in 2 kilometers. I think I hit almost all of the torpedoes I could launch on that one side, and the ship still survived because the torpedo alpha is just too low. But on the other hand, you saw that SAP salvo on the Z-52? That did 5k damage. And you can get these kinds of salvos quite often when you end up in a close range fight with a DD and destroyers do go down very quickly. So it just feels like uh, there are probably ways you can use this ship that I haven't really thought of. Especially when you consider the rolling smoke that I haven't used a single time yet. Uh, because on the Venezia this smoke was very useful but so far on the destroyer I've found that I don't really use it nearly as much. I suppose it might be because I haven't really run into those situations, but it also could be that I just haven't figured out a good way to use it yet. And perhaps I will in the future. Anyway, right now in this match, we've lost 5 ships. Sorry, 6 ships, they've lost 4, so they hold a significant advantage, and they also hold a points advantage. But we do hold caps, so we should be able to wait for them and then hopefully have some success. On this ship, I think you should launch your torpedoes as much as possible. Just dump them somewhere where you think the enemy might be, because your reload on them is very quick. 71 seconds base. So it only gets better from there with adrenaline rush and torpedo acceleration and all those things you can get. Okay, I, I'm turning around to go back to the B-cap because I thought that the Z-52 or the Shimakaza might go back and contest the B-cap. And it seems that is the case, so I should be able to intercept them and uh, make their life quite difficult. But again, we are at the ship's disadvantage, so we do need to worry about it quite a bit. On how much damage we take and what we do. 
Now, luckily, the Republic and the Co Grossa Kofest on the left side of the map on my team actually listened to me and turned around and went back to engage the Montana because they did have a lot of HP, so it's very good that they're uh, using it. Okay, I'm gonna engage the Z-52 with my guns and I'm starting to use smoke. And at this moment I thought, wow, I just made a mistake by using the smoke because it covers the enemy destroyers, right? And there's not much I can do with this. However, Strips pointed out that there's a Wooster right here next to me. Also, I hit the torpedo. But there's a Wooster next to me who can actually radar these ships. But for some reason she isn't, so I'm gonna say it in chat. Ask him to radar so that he spots the DDs for us. And there it is. And now I can use this smoke to engage the uh, destroyers. Or at least we can do it together. And I think the C-52 is down and the Worcester should have the second C-52 too. Okay, yep, this guy is very low HP. Oh, she's already taken care of. And the second C-52 was taken care of by the Haruguma. Excellent. Now it's time to focus on the Salem. And then the Kremlin, I guess. I can't really do that much to our Kremlin, so I am going to focus on the Salem instead. I'm more likely to deal a lot of damage because Kremlin has 60mm deck, I think. Unfortunately, the Kremlin uh, rebalanced our Haruguma, and this means that we're one ship less. However, at this point, it's a 515, so we've actually equalized the match more or less, at least to some degree. Okay, the focus is on the Salem, obviously, and I can use my SAP to great effect against her. Except, I guess it's not necessary because the Haragoma just went goodbye Salem and the Salem went goodbye. Next up is the Kremlin and oh! <laughs> the Haragoma rebalanced the Kremlin. The Kremlin absolutely deserves this detonation because he's playing the Kremlin. And uh, you know, it, it evens the odds with uh, incredibly good ships like that, right? Okay. Well, we have the uh, B and C caps, so it's up to us. Oh, a radar. It's a five against three, so we should hold the advantage. There's the Yoshino, who I'd like to engage. Oh, and there's the Des Moines with the radar. I'll take a few shots and then hide behind the island because that Des Moines has a lot of HP and I'm a bit too close right now. And I still have a good minute to go on my smoke. I'm gonna hide here for a little bit, then torpedo, and after that, we'll see. Because right now we're winning, because the Republic and the Kofast have actually taken the... Or at least are taking the cap zone. Oh god. Uh, the Republic and Kofast seem to have taken damage. And the only ship over there is the Shimakaze. So it seems that our battleships are in a bit of trouble. Hey, I get the shot. This angling is not enough for SAP. You really have to consider if you're gonna play against this... Okay, never mind. They say two non-penetrations and one ricochet. Maybe it was enough. But anyway, if you're going to play against SAP, you really should think of it as Minotaur AP. That is the easiest way to think of it, because Minotaur AP is something you do, can angle against, but you need to angle very, very steeply against it. And SAP kind of feels the same way. My smoke is up in 6 seconds, so I can do a rolling smoke while running away from this Des Moines, and uh, that should allow me to deal a lot of damage to this Des Moines. 5k, almost. Smoke is up, now I'm covered, and she doesn't have radar, so there's not much she can do, and I'm too far away for Hydra to reach. Now, if she were to try to angle against me, she would have to be bow on to me, but then th that would mean the Yoshino would be able to take care of this domain easily, and so she's pretty much between a rock and a hard place, and we should easily be able to take care of her. And I think there she goes. Oh. Really? 59 HP? Really, Yoshino? You couldn't give me this one kill? I have none. I have 143k damage and I haven't sunk a single ship and you couldn't give me this Des Moines that was at like 50 HP? Really? Oh boy. Anyway, next up Yoshino. Just launch random torpedoes. Maybe I'll get lucky. Probably not, but it doesn't cost me any. Actually, it might cost me something. Did you see that though? 6.8k? You can do these same hits against DDs too. 
So this SAP is very effective against DDs, even though you haven't really seen it in effect, but believe me, it's very, very effective. So if you're playing a destroyer against this kind of a ship, you have to be very careful. Very, very careful. Luckily though, her concealment isn't that great, so you can play around it. 12k on the Yoshino, I think uh, we we have her pretty easily. Ooh, my turret was broken, but Yoshino goes down, so we won the game. Unfortunately, the Shimokaze is way too far away for me to do anything, so that's not up to me. But maybe the Republic and Kofast can do something. Although it does seem that there are torpedoes headed for our friendly battleships, although they might already have hit her. Anyway, game's over, we're gonna hit the thousand points in a moment, and uh, I have to say that the enemy Shumakaza has played really well this game. But it wasn't quite enough to win. So, 163k damage, I citadeled the Kremlin somehow, magically, probably a bug though, but I did it. In a destroyer, 2481 base XP, I would say that this Harugumo with her detonating the one Kremlin made this game a lot easier. This could have been really difficult. But luckily it happened, so we take a fairly nice victory here. So as you can see, the Paula Emilio is um, a ship you can play and have great games in. But it plays slightly differently than what you're used to as a normal destroyer. Because it seems that... It's not that amazing against battleships as other destroyers often are with their torpedoes and whatnot. It seems to be much better at, the, at being a fighter against cruisers. So it's a ship that fights destroyers and cruisers rather than battleships. Of course it can still fight battleships, just like other destroyers can fight cruisers. But it seems that the focus is more on destroyers and cruisers rather than battleships and destroyers. So let's take a look at the Paolo Emilio in port. She's a destroyer, but she actually looks huge for a destroyer. At least she sits quite high in the water. But first, let's check out my commander skills and upgrades so you know what you're dealing with. I went with priority target, last stand, survivability expert, concealment expert, basic firing training, uh, adrenaline rush, superintendent, and then preventative maintenance. You could go some other build, for example I think Expert Marksman is very useful on a ship like this. You could also go Torpedo Acceleration which is quite useful. So you could for example drop Superintendent and Preventative Maintenance and take th those two skills. If you so choose. Obviously Jack of All Trades is always useful. Uh, I don't think the smoke thing is u that useful. AFT also probably doesn't fit well. But RPF for example is great. So you have a bunch of options but this is what I decided upon. I am not certain if this is the best one, we'll see eventually. In terms of upgrades though, uh, actually first let's go over consumables, a standard destroyer damage control party, then it's the exhaust smoke generator just like on the Venezia, it's a smoke screen that lasts for 40 seconds, uh, each puff of the smoke lasts for 10 seconds, so the smoke generator is active for 40 seconds and each puff lasts for 10 seconds, and then it has a 3 minute cooldown. With superintendent you have 4 charges, which is kind of hard to use all four, but it's possible that it can happen sometimes. And then it's a standard engine boost, 8%. That's actually fairly important. Actually, I don't know how standard this is considering the action time, but in term it's not 20% like the French destroyers get. In terms of upgrades, I go with uh, main arms modification 1, obviously. In the second slot, engine boost. If you don't have it, I would go propulsion as usual. Third slot, aiming systems. Fourth slot, rudder shift, because the rudder shift on the ship is slightly lacking even with this upgrade. Then obviously concealment expert. Now the concealment on the ship isn't great, 7.1 even with all the concealment stuff. But I think it's good enough to go for this. And then main battery modification, because battery reload is always better. Uh, range just isn't that useful because the shell characteristics aren't good enough. Just the same as you don't want AFT, or why you don't want AFT. Now, you might have noticed that the ship, uh, or you might have heard that the ship actually does not have HE, and that's true. First, I guess let's take a look at the armor layout. It's a standard destroyer, roughly, 19mm everywhere, except there's this 60mm side plate. Many people say that this is basically based on a cruiser, and I guess it would make sense that this would basically be where the citadel is for that cruiser. 
But this ship, obviously, since she's a destroyer, does not have a citadel. So, nothing special. The turrets are actually armored well, which is nice for a change, I guess, for a destroyer. Unlike the Hayate. Hayate, Hayate. Anyway, let's take a look at the stats. 28,200 HP. This is with survivability expert. Then artillery. You have 8 guns. Uh, 4 at the front. 4 at the rear. And they have 13.8 kilometer range, which is very good for a DD. But the shell arcs really... You don't want more than this range, to be honest. You just won't be able to hit things. 5.5 second reload. Well, I think it's 7 base because remember I have the uh, reload upgrade and basic firing training. With this, it's 20.7 second, 180 degrees. I wish it were faster, but it's good enough. And she has SAP and AP. SAP, just like on the cruiser, hits harder than AP, but you shouldn't get citadels. I say shouldn't because, uh, as you saw from the example earlier, for some reason it's possible. That's probably a bug, though. And uh, the SAP has 37 millimeters of penetration. So the way it works is that... Um, you should think of SAP like AP. You still have ricochets and you still have ricochets and overmatch. It's just that the values on this are very low. And when all of those aren't the case, you roll for penetration. But instead of penetration like AP, which is very strong penetration, you only have 37 millimeters of penetration, which is why you're not going, which is why you shouldn't get citadel hits. Uh, this does make it so that you're not going to get over penetrations. So basically, it's AP without over penetrations. That's how you should think of it. And at least the cruisers have very good auto bounce angles. I don't really know what they're like for the destroyer, though. Okay, moving on. The torpedoes are. Uh, they hit like wet noodles. You have uh, three torpedo launchers or four torpedoes each. They're actually stacked on top of one another. Look at this. Look, you can see the tubes are stacked. Uh, you have one in the middle and then one set of launchers on each side. So you can launch eight torpedoes per side at most. They have 12 kilometer range, which is good, but they only go 51 knots. This ship with speed boost and the flag goes 49 knots, meaning that the ship itself is only two knots slower than these torpedoes. They have a nice 71 second reload though, which is very good because you can basically spam them. But on the other hand, they only deal 13,000 damage, which is uh, incredibly low. Mutsuki, a tier 5 destroyer, has higher torpedo alpha damage than this ship does. Now, they do have good detectability at 1 km. This actually gives you less reaction time than, for example, Fletcher torpedoes. But they're still so slow that it's quite difficult to land these torpedoes most of the time, in my opinion. Now, torpedo acceleration on this ship is actually a massive boost, bigger than on almost any other ship, or at least most ships. But, you know, I, I think the great thing about these torpedoes is just throw them out and just forget about them, because I don't think you should really rely on these torpedoes. They don't hit hard enough. In fact, the Venezia's torpedoes are actually better than the Emilia's. I mean, look at this. These, these are 13.5 kilometers, they deal 13,900 damage, and they're 56 knots. These are literally just better torpedoes than the uh, destroyer torpedoes. But you know, whatever. We'll, we'll see what happens with them. The AA on this ship deals... actually I have no idea. I don't know. Maybe it's good, maybe it isn't. Maybe the numbers tell you something, they don't tell me anything though. Maneuverability wise... As I mentioned earlier, she is fast. 45.7 knots in port. With an 8% speed boost, you get to really fast numbers. In fact, if this ship had French speed boost, the 20% one, she could literally keep up with the top tier French destroyers. 810 meter turning circle is actually quite surprising because the numerical version of this is actually worse than Venetia's. Venetia's is 760. But 4.2 second rudder shift is good enough. Uh, makes the ship decently maneuverable. It could be better though. But if it's based on a cruiser, these are very good numbers. And detectability, 7.1 km detectability by sea, which is something you care about. And very good 3 km concealment by air, actually. That's very nice. And the important number is detectability after firing main guns in smoke. It's 3.6 km. Because remember, uh, you have the rolling smoke, which means that 
you can go full speed, use your smoke screen, and you're going to be covered by the smoke screen without being detected. So you can play slightly more aggressively and differently than you would in other destroyers. So, yeah. I th it feels like the ship might actually be good. It just seems kind of difficult to have great games in her for me. But I think it's because I'm, I haven't really taken advantage of all the benefits the ship can bring. I think the rolling smoke might allow you to play in ways which are just so different from other destroyers that it could be incredibly useful. Especially when combined with the very high alpha on these SAP shells. They can hit really, really, really hard. And because of that, I, I have a hard time saying that the... Uh, Emilio is not a good ship, and uh, as a result, I'll, I'll say that uh, she's fun enough to play and makes me want to play more of her, just so I can try to figure out how I should really be playing her, because she just feels different as a destroyer. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, I would like to thank the patrons on Patreon. Thank you very much for your continued support, Pertato. And I hope I'll see you guys next time.